Hey you guys, it's Lexi. Um, I decided to make my first cooking video today since it's officially April, like I promised. Um, and today I have a rack of ribs that I'm gonna prepare for you. I'm gonna show you how I thaw, clean, season, and bake my ribs and what uh, seasonings and sauces I actually decide to use. Um, I hope this is informational for you. Uh, if you have any questions, please comment and ask them. I'll help you out as best as I can. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited to get started. So to start off, um, I have had my ribs thawing in cold water, and it's probably room temperature by now, but I took them out at like noon, and it's about three, so they need at least three hours to thaw. Um, if you wanna take them out in the morning, you don't have to put it in water, but I wanted it to thaw a little bit quicker because I didn't know I was making ribs. Tyler decided he wanted them, <laughs> so. Um, I thaw them in cold water, and um, also I forgot to mention, please wash your hands before you cook. <laughs> um, some people, I guess some people don't know, you're supposed to start off by doing that. Wash your hands. I used hand sanitizer just because of coronavirus as well. I washed and sanitized, but um, also you should wear your hair up to avoid getting hair in your food, but um, I'm cooking for me and my boyfriend, and I really don't care, so I'm not putting my hair up. But yes, so cold water, um, at least three hours to thaw. And you can see here, it's completely thawed. It's, uh, you can tell it's not thawed if you're not able to bend it, if it doesn't bend when you pick it up, if it's still rock hard, so it's ready. Okay, so after I uh, took my ribs out of the package, I gave them a good rinse in the sink just with some cold water, um, just in case, you know, there's any um nastiness lingering on there you never i know you never know so that's why i do that and now um i have the underside of the ribs here you can tell it's the underside because there's a membrane on here um I'm trying to make it so you can see it but the the top side it's all rib meat and the under underside it has a membrane and some you can feel the bones a lot better so i'm going to start off by removing this membrane and what this does, I'm just using a knife to kind of help me peel it off. Um, what this does is it makes it so that the ribs kind of get that fall off the bone feeling like um, they're a lot easier to eat. Remember, it doesn't taste good. It doesn't really feel good in your mouth. This one's a little tough, but um, so yeah, you just want to get this. It's like a skin that... Uh, Jeez, oh, Pete's. It's a skin that holds kind of the ribs together. So this, when you take it off and you bake it, it makes it so the ribs don't fall off the bone like you want. So I'm having a little bit better luck this time. Every rack of ribs is different. This time I'm having better luck just pulling it off. Sometimes you need a knife to help out. Sometimes you need to use a knife to do all the work, but this time I'm having a lot more luck just pulling it right off. You can hear my oven going off. I set my oven at 280 degrees today. And I got that membrane all, all the way off. Some parts of your ribs actually don't have the membrane on it. You can, you'll can you see where it ends. Um, but I'll show you what my ribs look like now that I have the membrane off. Hold well, on, I'm going to rinse my hands off. But I peeled that membrane off nice and good. And now you can see it's like, it's not smooth like it was before. Now it has like a more rough texture. And my membrane actually ended right there. It didn't cover the entire rack of ribs. But that's a really important step to get the, the ribs to cook how you want them to. 
Okay, so I need you guys to bear with me a little bit. I get a, <laughs> I'm get i getting a little bit short of breath because um, I'm nine months pregnant and talking and moving at the same time is a little bit hard. But, you know, I, I we're going to get through this. So uh, I'm going to show you the seasonings that I use now. So I use just regular salt and pepper. I use some uh, seasoned salt from Lowry's, onion powder, garlic powder, a little bit of lemon pepper and then Old Bay and this Slappy Mama seasoning. Um, the Slappy Mama is spicy. It's not like super over the top, but I love a little bit of heat in my ribs, so that's why I add it on there. Some people choose not to. Um, the Old Bay, for those of you that have had it, it has a very distinct Cajun-y taste as well. I wouldn't call it spicy, but I love it on my ribs. Some people also wouldn't use that. If you want, if you want to stick to the more traditional side, I guess you could just do salt, pepper, seasoned salt, and then onion powder, garlic powder. But I think these three seasonings um, add a really fun taste to the ribs that I enjoy. So let's begin. Um, what I do is I season both sides of my ribs and then I rub it in. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. It's not that hard. Okay. And also, <laughs> this is my first video. I ordered a tripod that I'm gonna have for my next videos that I make. Um, and that's gonna be super nice as far as setup because this is I'm just using um my dish rack right now to hold up the <laughs> to hold up my phone. So so I'm starting with just salt and pepper. Some people only season with salt and pepper. That's lame, guys. Don't be the person that only seasons with salt and pepper. <laughs> There's some um, meals you can do that with. Ribs is not one. Do not just season with salt and pepper because it is so lame. I guess if you have a really distinct um, sauce that you like to use, it could be okay. But I honestly think that building flavor is how you get your meals to stand out. So whenever you can build flavor, please do it. It'll make a difference. The people you're cooking for will love it. You'll love it. So just season your food, guys. <laughs> so how's everybody hanging in there? this quarantine. I'm going a little kooky, not going to lie. But then you can see my cat back there. I've been <laughs> talking to her a lot, but we're hanging in there, right? So as you can see, I now have, this is the underside where we remove the membrane. Um, I have it all seasoned on there. Now I'm going to rub it in. And what this does is wherever there was some unevenness I don't even know if that's a word wherever you didn't evenly apply the seasoning to this will help kind of spread it out there and then also this gets it to stick to the meat a little bit better um the store sometimes you can find your own what's called a dry rub for your ribs that you can use that's already like a combination of seasonings there's some good ones out there um but I personally like to use my own combination. So um, I'm gonna do this on the other side. I'm not gonna film it because you guys can see what I did, but um, I'm gonna do this to the other side and then we'll continue with the rest of the video. All right, so I got my my ribs nice and seasoned. Look at that seasoning job. See, look at all that, all those colors and flavors on there. Like why wouldn't you wanna do that? So um, now I'm gonna show you how I prepare for my first um, cycle of baking. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap this nice and good in tin foil. I got two slices of tin foil here. I'm going to cut my rack of ribs in half because I like my sauce one way and Tyler likes his sauce another way. Um, but you don't have to do that. You don't have to cut it in half. You can do it however you want. You can keep it as a whole. You can cut it into quarters if you have four different people. I don't know, whatever you wanna do. So I'm gonna cut it in half. I'm gonna wrap each half individually. And then I'm going to put it in the oven here. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that. All right. 
So when you cut it in half, you just want to find a place in between the bones. You're not going to be able to cut through the bones. So find the place in between the bones, call that half. I'm going to give Tyler the bigger half because he eats significantly more than I do. Well, I won't say significantly, but he eats more than I do, especially now that I am pregnant. It, the baby takes up lots of room in my belly, so I can't eat as much as I used to. And I got, like I said, I got two sheets of tin foil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this up in that tin foil. What I like to do, and you'll see later why I do this. And I'll, I'll show it to you a little bit better. Is I fold down the sides and make it like almost like a little like a little boat around almost like a little boat around the ribs and then I fold that over to cover it and what this does is it keeps the juices around it and then also when I go in later to add the sauce I can just easily boom open this right up so that's why I do it that way um it's not super important you can wrap it however you want but that's how I wrap it so I'm gonna do the same thing on the other half as well okay so um it's now about 3 20 so we'll say the prep took like 20 minutes or so I mean I was video taping this whole time so it'll probably be quicker for you but because it did take like 20 minutes off I decided to bump up my oven to 285 and now I am going to bake my wrapped um, ribs for two and a half hours. Um, for ribs, you always want to go low and slow. Um, you can Google some other, like if you have more time and you can go even slower and lower temperature, um, sometimes it's even better. Um, but I know Tyler gets off of work at 4.30. He's usually pretty hungry, so I'm trying to have it ready for him when he gets here. But I'm going to go two and a half hours to start off with. Um, and this is going to do the majority of the cooking of my ribs. And um, after the two and a half hours at 285, I'm going to bump my oven up to 400. And I'm going to add my sauces onto it um, and let those sauces cook in there for about 30 more minutes. So it's going to be three hours total of baking um two and a half at 285 and then half an hour at 400 so let's get this started i'm just gonna set my microwave all right hey guys so i learned that on the video editing app <laughs> i was using that the videos turn out way better if you go horizontally instead of vertically so sorry for the first like 80% of my video but I am learning in this first video so I'm going to show you the sauces that I use so for my half what I'm going to use is this uh Frank's Red Hot it's a sweet chili sauce and it's very tangy and delicious and I love it this is like one of my very favorite sauces actually Tyler's grandma uh, Yvonne showed me this sauce um, so shout out to her for that great sauce. And I mix it with honey mustard. That's what I use for my half just because I love the tanginess. Like I love really tangy like flavors. Tyler for his half, I use these two. And then I also use our traditional, uh, sweet baby Ray's barbecue sauce. He, you know, loves that traditional flavor in there as well. So, um, I make it special for him, for his half. Sometimes he eats a little bit of my ribs, just so you know. So my half is still good. But, um, yeah. Okay, I'm going to start off with Tyler's barbecue sauce. Well, his rib sauce. So we're going to start off with the Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue. I don't measure these out. Um, for him, I'm just doing pretty much three even um portions like one third sweet baby rays one third uh the frank sweet chili sauce maybe not a whole third honey mustard just a little bit of honey mustard so you can see here 
think that's how it should look. And I'm going to evenly mix this up. It's going to make a beautiful color. You want it to be nice and evenly mixed. You want this to become one sauce. And this is probably total, I'm gonna call this three tablespoons of sauce that I'm gonna use on his half of his ribs. And I just lather it right on there when I put it on. I'll show, don't worry, I'll show you how. All right. I'm gonna add just a, a little bit more regular barbecue because I'm looking for a certain color that I know it's supposed to turn when it, oh yeah, there it is. <laughs> then this is going to be Tyler's favorite sauce. So yeah, maybe this is three or four tablespoons of sauce, I would say, and that's for his half of the ribs. Smells delicious. And I'll show you that color that it turns. See that? It's beautiful brown orange yellow color i guess and it makes a nice thick delicious tangy barbecue sauce and for my sauce i'm gonna say it's gonna be about probably two-thirds of this uh sweet chili sauce Sorry, I got a phone call there, but two thirds of the sweet chili sauce, one third honey mustard. I'm just gonna add, I've tasted Tyler's sauce, it tasted so good. I'm just gonna add a tiny, the tiniest squirt. You saw how little that was. So the tiniest squirt of um, sweet baby rays there. So this is my sauce. I love, like I said, love, love, love that Frank sauce. So that's why I decided to do mine that way. And now I'm gonna evenly stir up my sauce. And my sauce is a beautiful peach color. Doesn't have the, the color that the barbecue sauce adds in there. Cause I just, I added maybe half a tablespoon into that. So this is gonna be my sauce here. I'll show you it. Now that I got it evenly stirred up, this is what I'm adding to my half. And that's Tyler's half. So I'll show you once the ribs are ready, how I apply it. Okay, so it's been two and a half hours at 285 degrees. So let's take a look at these bad boys. See how the juices are staying in here? We got some heat coming off of them. Look at the beautiful seasonings on there. So this is my half over here. It's the smaller half. Um, I'm gonna show you how I apply the sauce. Might not use all of this, that's okay. Um, but you do wanna make sure you have a good amount of sauce on your ribs because um, when you bake it, it kinda crusts a little bit and you still want your ribs to be extra saucy. So I'm just dumping it right on there. Just dumping it on there. If you have a brush, they have like those barbecue little brush things. Those are ideal, but it's not necessary. I'm just gonna lather it on there with a fork. Nice and saucy all over my ribs. And then I am going to leave this uncovered for the next 30 minutes in the oven. So we moved our oven up to 400 degrees. Let's do Tyler's. Ooh, his looks so good. Look at that. Yum. So we got his sauce here. I'm just pouring it right on there. Nice tangy rich barbecue sauce it's nice and thick and we're gonna rub his in sorry <laughs> rubbing in his sauce you don't need to do the underside 
Some people choose to. I don't. Because you don't eat the underside, really. Mostly it's just the top half that you're eating. So now that I got these nice and coated with my two sauces, you can see the difference in color pretty well here. I'm going to put it back into the oven. We're going to have it uncovered so that the sauces get nice and or we get some nice crisping onto the ribs for 30 minutes at 400 degrees. And I will show you the finished product after this. Woo -woo. Hey guys, I just wanted to add in one uh, quick comment here. So you want to keep, I mean, don't overdo it, but you want to continually check on your ribs after like probably an hour and a half to two hours of it cooking, just because every oven is different. Um, every oven cooks differently every like i don't believe that the heat's always the same um because i found that the oven at this apartment here cooks a little bit quicker than my oven at our old apartment in grand rapids so um just keep checking on your ribs make sure they're not burning make sure that they're not already like kind of falling off because uh you want to make sure that you know they cook well um so here this is i'm doing two and a half hours and then 30 minutes um some people could do one and a half hour i mean two hours then 30 minutes so they would have two and a half hours total i'm gonna have three hours total um some people they need to cook a little bit longer if their oven doesn't stay as hot I, just make sure you're checking on your ribs that's the most important thing check on them make sure that they're cooking right um I tried to show you the stages to kind of know what they should look like and I will show you at the end what they should look like when you know they're done. So yes. Okay so this is after 30 minutes at 400 degrees. I accidentally left it in a little bit past so it got a little bit burnt on the edges but um, basically this is what it should look like when you're done. Um, this is my sauce on this side and Tyler's on this side and yeah it's all finished.